No script to run, it just shows the message boxes. That means everything is good to go. So what I do now, I launch another product, another program called Retail Pause. And by calling that specific .NET application, I can launch the point of sale. And I assume now I'm a cashier or a store manager. And since I've come to Boston store, I log on as a particular individual, which is a cashier. And I open up a new shift, let's say. And indeed, I can go to the tasks and then click on a customer order and recall that particular order by searching that specific default customer for online transactions. When I select this customer, I specify a date range that in which they said that they place the place of order for. When I search it, it indeed shows and that a specific sales order appears. So here you could view the details and you can see more information about the customer perhaps. And as far as this, you could see the customer information, you can see the order information, the status of the order, you can see the item details right from here, you could perform the pickup, but I just like to cancel this, come back to it and show you that page a bit differently. Another alternative was to click on a pickup item and automatically would have come to this page. In other words, this page would have become automatically uh, enabled. And then, since I didn't specify any shipping or delivery, you don't have any information there. You see the payment history is not here from a point of sale because I plugged in a credit card information that it really didn't get processed. Just wanted to pass on and be able to generate the transaction. And then when I click on the order summary, you can indeed view a receipt as far as like how much is total that the customer has to pay you. And you have received 15% discount depending on what has been said already. When I cancel this, you have literally the capability to go back perhaps and then identify the same search once more. I intentionally do this for you to see it again. I specify the start date to be the date that I indeed place an order, let's say. And when I search this, this time I click pick up order or I can cancel the order, let's say. Here it comes back to the same form, but it looks into item details. So when I click pick up all items, the value of the pickup quantity becomes one. That means, okay, I pick up this item for the customer and here it shows that there is no deposit has been applied for this pickup. Based on your rule, you probably requested the deposit, but no deposit is applied for this one. So since I call perhaps my manager and they say, you know what, the person has placed an order online and perhaps it's a credit or whatever, and we have to give this particular item to that customer, automatically allows you to carry on anyways, and you see that the item gets ringed up in your point of sale. But the balance it shows is still as 566 and 26 because as I mentioned, my credit card did not process your payment connector. In this demonstration, we just wanted to show you what would happen. And then as far as the status of this, on the point of sale, you notice that it shows pickup order. And here you have the capability to click exact. And then since I was a cashier and there was no deposit available, I might want to call my manager and my manager comes and plug in and allows me to carry on with the process. So I log on as somebody who's the manager indeed. And after that goes through, you notice that the cashier can continue and it approves this transaction. And I click exact in order to tender this transaction and I hand in the product to this customer and the transaction renders. As soon as I do this, you see a message box indicating that the operation was completed. And what does this mean? It changes the status of the sales order on your headquarter to be invoiced. And of course it would be picked, deducted and invoiced. So automatically this becomes zero. And as I showed you, you had the capability in order to place an order online and pick it up from the store.